Gertrude McBuzz. There once was a girl bird named Gertrude McBuzz, and she had the smallest plain tail that ever was. One droopy feather, that's all that she had, and oh, that one feather made Gertrude so sad. For there was another young bird that she knew, a fancy young birdie named Lowly Lou, and instead of one feather behind, she had two. Mm, poor Gertrude. Whenever she happened to spy Miss Lowly Lou flying by in the sky, she got a very jealous. She frowned and she pouted. Then one day she got awfully mad and she shouted, this just isn't fair. I have one, she has two. I must have a tail just like Lola Lou. So she flew to her uncle, a doctor named Dick, whose office was high on a tree by the lake. And she cried, Uncle Doctor, oh please, do you know some kind of a pill that would make my tail grow? Tut tut, said the doctor. Such talk, how absurd. Your tail is just right for your kind of a bird. Then Gertrude had tantrums. She raised such a din that finally her uncle, the doctor, gave in. And he told her just where she could find such a pill on a pillberry vine up on top of a hill. Oh, thank you, chirped Gertrude McBuzz, and she flew right straight to the hill where the pillberry grew. Yes, there was the vine. And as soon as she saw it, she plucked up a berry. She started to gnaw it. It tasted just awful, almost made her sick. But she wanted that tail, so she swallowed it quick. Then she felt something happen. She felt a small twitch, and if she'd been as if she'd been tapped down behind by a switch. And Gertrude looked round, and she cheered. It was true. Two feathers, exactly like Low Lily Lou. Then she got an idea. Ah, now I know what I'll do. I'll grow a tail better than Low Lily Lou. These pills that grow feathers are working just fine. So she nibbled another one off of the vine. She felt a new twitch, and then Gertrude yelled, Whee! Miss Lola has just two feathers. I have three. When Lola Lee Lou sees this beautiful stuff, she'll fall right down flat on her face, sure enough. I'll show her who's pretty, I certainly will. Why, I'll make my tail even prettier still. And she snatched up those berries that grew on the vine. She gobbled them down, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and she didn't stop eating. Young Gertrude McBuzz, till she'd eaten three dozen, and that's all that there was. Then the feathers popped out with a zag, with a zing. They blossomed like but, uh, flowers that bloom in the spring, all fit for a queen with a sight to behold. They sparkled like diamonds and gumdrops and gold, like silk, like spaghetti, like satin, like lace. They burst out like rockets all over the place. They waved in the air, they swished in the breeze, and some were as long as the branches of trees. And still they kept growing. They popped and they popped until long about sundown when they finally stopped. And now, giggled Gertrude, the next thing I'll do is fly right straight home and show Lola Lilo. And when Lola sees these, why her face will get red and she'll let out a scream and she'll fall right down dead. <laughs> then she spread her wings to take off from the ground. But with all those feathers, she weighed 90 pounds. She yanked and she pulled and she let out a squawk, but that bird couldn't fly. She couldn't run, she couldn't walk. And all through that night, she stuck on that hill and Gertrude McBuzz might be stuck up there still. If her good uncle Dake hadn't heard a girl yelp, he rushed to rescue her and brought along help. To lift Gertrude up almost broke all their beaks and to fly her back home, it took almost two weeks. And then it took almost another week longer, more to pull out those feathers. My Gertrude was sore. And finally, when all of the pulling was done, Gertrude behind her again had just one. That one little feather she had as a starter. But now that's enough because now she's smarter.